In this matchup, we have the Doberman Pincher versus the Connie Corso. Which is your favourite and which would you choose? Let us know at the end of the video because we're going to break down the incredible differences between these two amazing world-class Guardian breeds. Welcome back to the Fenrir Doberman Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FenrirCanineEaters.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly want to know about the incredible Doberman, then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect Doberman companions. So if you love the Doberman as much as we do here at Fenrir, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you never miss a future Doberman video. So let's dive into today's video and we're going to compare the Doberman and the Connie Corso at depth. So it was in Germany in the early 19th century where the Doberman story really begins. A tax collector named Louis Doberman was facing somewhat of a problem. His profession wasn't exactly a safe one. People were never pleased to see him when he came to collect his taxes, and he often carried around large sums of money as he moved around doing these collections. He was in desperate need of some muscle and protection to accompany him on these rounds. He also needed something dependable and something brave that wouldn't turn tail when things took a turn for the worst so he came up with a clever idea he would create his own dog breed to fulfill this role to absolute perfection so Louis got to work on creating this dream breed. He crossed a black and tan terrier with a little bit of Rottweiler, sprinkled in some German Pincher, a native smooth coat herding dog to create this vision, the Doberman Pincher, the world's first breed bred specifically for personal protection. His first rendition of the breed was not as refined or agile as what we know today, but it still did not stop the breed from gaining fame far and wide. Everyone wanted one of these tax collector dogs, which had proved to be an incredible working dog. As the world changed and Mr. Doberman's type of tax collection work became obsolete, the breed he created easily transitioned into other work lines. They had already been finding themselves in roles with different law enforcement, military and personal protection work and quickly transitioned to a variety of different working dogs roles. Now, the Connie Corso's roots are ancient, dating back to antiquity. It descends from the Greek Molossi. During the height of the Roman Empire, the Roman presence in Greece was great, and they took a shine to the Molossi, so much so that they started to export them back to Italy and cross them with some of their native breeds, creating the first Connie Corso, and a breed versatile enough to stand the test of time. The breed was more rustic and not as refined, but the empire still prized it. The legions enlisted the dog, and dubbed them the Pyre Theory as they were used to fearlessly charge enemy lines with buckets of ignited oil strapped to their backs. Try and envision that, a Connie Corso tearing at you with a flaming barrel of oil on its back. Absolutely crazy. But anyway, the foundation of this breed the Romans created survived even the fall of the Empire. Corsos went from being war dogs to filling more domestic roles such as hunting companions, droving cattle and guard dogs and it remained that way for centuries. Individuals could be found all across the Italian countryside working in these new roles. But the 20th century and the rise of modern inventions spelled trouble for the breed. They were being replaced and their number dropped to where extinction seemed inevitable. It wasn't until 1970s when Italian dog fanciers rediscovered the breed and these individuals set out to restore and repopulate this now world famous guardian breed. Hey guys, very quickly, in case you didn't know, we have our perfect puppy program. It's the program that I designed myself as a canine behaviorist to help you guys become a high level canine leader yourself and then how to be able to take your puppy from the second you bring it home all the way through to that dream of the perfect canine companion that you've always wanted. So if you want more information on that, there'll be a link down in the description box below. Thousands of people have now gone through that process to extremely high levels of success. So there's some testimonials you can go and check out. More information, it's all in the description box below, but let's get back into the video you were just watching. The Doberman is a notable and striking breed, one that is almost always instantly recognisable, especially when it comes to that hallmark colouring of black and tan. Their frame is squared and their structure is a combination of musculature and agile, even elegance. Their muzzle is long and forms a blunt wedge shape when they have those dark eyes which are almond shaped. Traditionally their ears were cropped and their tails are docked, though there has been a steady decline in this practice and it's become illegal in many parts of the world, including here in the UK. 
UK. But you can still find them in the United States as the American Kennel Club still accepts cropping and docking as a, as a breed standard. Now, male Dobermans will be between 23 to 28 inches tall, and then they usually weigh around 75 to 100 pounds, with females being a little bit shorter and a little bit lighter. And the Doberman is famous for its most common black and tan colouring, but the breed does come in additional colours such as blue and rust, Isabella, red and rust, all black, white and albino. Now the Connie Corso is another striking breed. Compared to most Mastiff type dogs, it tends to be on the more slender and elegant side. Some would even say cat-like or panther-like. They have large blocky heads and refined muscular bodies covered in short stiff fur. Like the Doberman, they also had cropped ears and docked tails for working purposes but with these practices being outlawed in many countries you're starting to see more natural conny corsos with traditional mastiff type ears and a longer tail now male corsos tend to go up to around 28 inches tall and then their weight proportionate to their height with females being slightly smaller and then therefore lighter the corso comes in many colors from light fawn to red with a distinctive black mask Formentio, which is again from red to light fawn with a grey mask, and you can also find dogs that are solid black, solid blue, and variations of brindle. Other colours are present in the breed, such as liver, chocolate, Isabella, tawny, and straw, but they are considered out of breed standard. The Connie Corso will sometimes also surprise with a black and tan dog, which is a genetic throwback to the historic rustic dogs in the Connie Corso's ancestry. Dobermans are high energy, high activity breeds. They have a ton and they need to be given a lot of productive daily outlets to really be able to sap that energy and stop them from going to destructive behaviours like chewing and destroying things to excessive barking. Therefore, a couple of long walks a day is bare minimum for this breed. On the other hand, the Connie Corso is slightly less demanding in the exercise department, though they do have excellent stamina and endurance to keep up with a more active owner, especially in the Mastiff world. So again, you could do with a couple of decent sized walks and then plenty of play and mental stimulation, usually in the forms of obedience to really be able to tire out a Corso and let them settle when they're in the home. Now, both of these breeds do have short coats, but that doesn't mean they don't shed. They both still possess an undercoat and will shed when temperatures change drastically, though actually brushing them is much less of a process and they only require a quick full brush down once, maybe twice a week. Now, as we go forward with the rest of this video, you need to go with the assumption that the dog has been given excellent socialization and training from a young age. It will also be assumed that the dog is of correct temperament and disposition for its breed because those things are required for the overarching standards that we're going to talk about in terms of temperament. Now, the Doberman is loyal, fearless, alert, and intelligent, and they are not a breed to try anything dodgy with as they have incredibly high mental and physical endurance. While not always the most most accepting of strangers this breed would do anything for its family and their entire world revolves around their people they would happily lay down their lives for them and anyone with bad intentions will get first-hand experience of why this breed was and still is nicknamed the devil dog now the connie corso is intimidating intelligent willful and courageous the heart of a war dog still beats in their chest to this day and anyone trying to harm their family will get a taste of that the breed is fiercely devoted to its family and with proper training they display a reserved and calm temperament while in the presence of its people the breed also has a pretty stable temperament all around the breed passed a temperament assessment given by the american American Temperament Test Society, with flying colours by the way, and earned an 88.1% rating, which is higher than more common breeds like Rottweilers and even the Golden Retriever. So that was a quick fire breakdown of some of the main differences between these two absolutely wonderful breeds. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button and don't forget that we've got two new videos coming to this channel every single week. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn in on the notification bell because I cannot wait to see you on the next episode.